What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Brent Watches Babylon 5 for the first time. Today, I am watching season five, episode number eight, Day of the Dead, and I don't know. I got to tell you, this season has taken a lot of the wind out of the sails. Last week, awful episode. Had a ton going for it, though. Like, a ton going for it. But the episode as a whole, eh. Byron is just getting on my nerves. You know what I want is I want Lanier. Unfortunately, I don't know if Bill Mummy is just off doing another movie and that's where he is or what's going on, but I think he's just going to be gone and he might pop up a handful more times as a guest role more than likely. I don't know. It's just going to be really random. What I said last week in my prediction was it feels like we're on this train with Byron and the telepaths and we're going to continue with where we are. Byron said last week he's going to make them take responsibility by force and that's probably a lot of what this is day of the dead is the title of the episode that's a major celebration here on earth generally by our mexican brethren uh people in central america i assume i know mostly in mexico is where i'm familiar with it personally i don't know a ton about the celebration except i know they got some totally rad outfits and the skulls which just look absolutely amazing we have a couple of them floating around here that we bought at epcot from the mexico pavilion uh, which obviously makes everything super authentic i guess um, anyway i think that we're in this sort of a celebration i don't know if it's the this actual celebration of Day of the Dead, or if it's just a bigger celebration, honoring ancestors and stuff like that. And I think Byron and the telepaths are gonna like show people what their ancestors did to telepaths or something like that. I, I don't know. I, have, I really have no idea where we're going. You guys probably do. I don't, and I'm about to find out. As I watch this episode for the very first time, you guys are here along for the ride. Please comment down below. Please remember, no spoilers. I haven't seen anything past this point. I don't know what's gonna happen with Byron. I don't know what's gonna happen with Lanier. I don't know anything. This is where we are. Also, please, while you're here, like, subscribe, do all that sort of stuff. And if you like what we're doing here at Babylon 5 for the first time, please be sure to share this video with all of your friends. All right, with that, let's dive into this episode, Day of the Dead. Is that Penn? Is that Penn Gillette? Anything to declare? <laughs> I have nothing to declare, my dear man, except my genius. And I have nothing to declare except Rebo's genius either. Ah. That's Teller. This is Penn and Teller. Oh my gosh. Zooty, zoop, zoop, zoop. Sounds like we're through the already. <laughs> Sir, what do you know about Mercury religious customs? Uh, <laughs> this has Penn and Teller in it. I had no idea that Penn and Teller came to Babylon 5. Wow. Wow. Okay. 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 Listen, I've got a little affinity for Penn and Teller. I really do. One of my dear, dear childhood friends, best friend growing up, he lived two doors down from me. His name was David. And I won't tell you his last name because he hasn't given me permission to share all of his information. Anyway, he very much got into magic as a kid. We used to do magic shows and stuff. And we had a Penn and Teller type act where I was the, the big kind of buffoon guy. And he was the guy doing all the technical stuff. And I would kind of help serve a lot of those pieces. Anyway, I didn't continue with that very long. I, I never got into it, but my friend David, he stuck with it for quite a while. David David was a, an amazing guy. At nine years old, this is back in the 90s, 80s, he created one of the very first websites selling brass knuckles. And to this day, it's like the world's largest distributor of brass knuckles. And he did it when he was nine. I mean, David's, David's amazing. He also got into magic. He currently lives in Vegas doing stuff. I'm not even really sure what all he's doing, but we've had a lot of time with Penn and Teller and I love seeing them on his show. This is, this is, please let this be funny. Please let this be a comedy. Oh, I could use a comedy, especially after last week. Let's go. Noble Mulari. Who would you meet of those who have gone before us? Of the dead, I would meet um, the first emperor. I have several bones to pick with him. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a bone to pick with the emperor. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I insist. May the comet bring you wisdom. Uh, a Bricare Harvest Festival? <laughs> Tonight is the day of the dead. Tonight, the dead return. Penn and Teller, please let this be a comedy. Oh my gosh, I'd, I'd be tickled to death with that. He said something about the Zooty. Zo wasn't there like a, a comedy duo that they mentioned like one, maybe two episodes. I don't even know how long ago. I remember Lanier saying Zoot Zoot Zooty. They talked about like Reba and Zoot, Re Rebo, Rebo and Zooty or Zoot, Rebo and Zoot. 
Something like that. What's is that who these two are is that who they're supposed to be playing? Okay. By the way, Londo sitting there, he says, Is there anyone you want to speak to who's gone before? And Londo says, The first importer. I'd have a bone to pick with him. That's funny. Day of the Dead. This looks listen, some of those skulls looked very right on the money with, with Day of the Dead type stuff. So uh, hey, by the way, if you celebrate Day of the Dead, if that's part of your cultural heritage and, and that's something you do, please write in and let us know what you do and how that works and, and what that looks like for you. I'd be really interested to know. It's nothing that I know a ton about. So Something about the Vercari and a comet. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> right as soon as I gave up hope of seeing this guy again. Here he just waltzes back onto the screen and right back into my life. Gosh. He's wearing a ranger outfit, isn't he? All right. Your partner, he's well. Partner. Husband, yes, he's uh, doing well. Right now, he's um, he's hosting a cocktail party for um, Rebo and Zuti. Rebo and Zuti are here. Zoot Zoot. <sighs> Zoot Zoot. There it is. This is truly a day of Rebo life. and Zuti. There it is. Humor is truly a universal element. Now, with all the trauma that we have endured, please lately, let that flower shoot me shared into the face with water. Confer upon them freedom of Babylon Five. <laughs> Yeah, I'm with her. There's nothing I funny about this. I have written a speech, which I will recite in English. <laughs> oh, this is a moment you can tell your children about, Captain. <laughs> I'll get on to having some right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're well, laughing like way too to hard you? at those guys. And to you, Ambassador. Just don't yeah, buy it. For you. I've, uh, I've taken your request under advisement in my capacity as captain of Babylon 5. And everything is okay. We can purchase Babylon 5 for the Brakiri. It must be ours by sunset. Mm -hmm. We'll give it back. It's yours again at sunrise. Well, everything seems to be in order. Captain! Ah, please forgive this intrusion. I strongly advise you against this transaction. It is dangerous and foolish and unwise. Religious toleration is foolish. This is not a matter of toleration. You do not know what you are doing. That Bracari is rather chill for somebody who just busted up in trying to stop him from doing something that seems very important. He's just sort of sitting there. It happened to other people, wasn't it? Lockley here, what's happening? Did we just turn into a horror story? Went from comedy to a horror so... story? I appreciate that Londo's self-portrait in the background like, did not lose any lighting whatsoever in that. Uh-oh. Is it Tamav? Lady Adira? He's gonna get hit over the head with that bottle. Hello. It is Lady Adira. Hello. Yay! I came back. But she's dead. Adira? She's dead. Adira, Terry? My Adira? I killed the man that killed you. Do you know that? But it didn't bring you back. I am to be emperor, but... I give it all I away. I think that I would give it all away to have you back. Yep. Something's gonna be up with her. <clears throat> hey, does, do we get to see Kosh come back? Like, he's dead, right? That'd be dope. I thought you were dead. Yeah, I'm, I'm dead. Isn't he married? But you know, I missed you. Happy day of the dead. <laughs> Lizzie? Is that you? Where is this place? Oh my God. Sister. Zoe. You choked on your... You said this stuff would kill me, huh? Wanna say I told you so? You can if you want. She's supposed to be an old girlfriend. It has more of a sister vibe. So then vibe. what happened? That moved really slow for something that had that much force behind it. Okay, is Lanier inside the zone or not? Thank Good you. evening, Ranger Lanier. Oh, that's his little pike thing. Okay. What's Morden? I know you. I recognize I the voice. So. When I was alive, I was known as Mr. Morden. Do you know how long she sold them that area for? No, sir. Don't you usually sell people log. stuff have noted permanently? All the and get me the Brakiri homeworld. Would you like it any better if I were to tell you that you will betray the Amleshock? You are lying. So far, this is a very weird, why have these two guys show up? Unless this is like that CW thing where they try to get like famous folks to show up on a show to make people come over and watch it. And that's the whole reason Penn and Teller are here. Probably that's why. They have nothing to do with the episode so far. Like nothing. They're just there. Why does each person get the person they get? You might think it has something to do with some unsolved portion of their past or something like that. Garibaldi gets Dodger, although Garibaldi's supposed to be married. Lockley gets apparently an ex-girlfriend that she used to do a lot of drugs with. Who was the other person we saw? 
I feel like I should know. Oh my gosh, who was it? I don't know, whatever, it doesn't matter. Still, that person was probably related by love of some sort, right? But Lanier gets Morden, who gives him this warning that he's gonna betray the Anlashaw. Lanier's going bad guy, okay. I believe Morden in this one, by the way. I don't know, we wanna do something more important. But you two have a real gift. I mean, when things were bad under President Clark, you two said things on your show that no one else would dare to say. But no one takes comedians seriously. Isn't that a contradiction? No, we say serious things in a funny way, but when the joke comes, people stop listening. The real comedy all happens in the Senate. They do, they do one idiotic thing after another, but people listen because they say it seriously. Uh, Former stand-up comedian here. Yes, I really did that for a number of years. I 1000% understand what these guys are talking about. At the same time, I'm also acutely aware, even here doing something as simple as a podcast, right? The entertainment value matters. Being able to provide distraction, being able to give people something to think about that's not just the real world, like all of that actually is really important to our everyday life, to overall satisfaction of life. It's why movies are such a big thing. It's why music is such a big thing. Comedy is such a big thing even podcasting and stuff like this like this gives us something to think about it gives us something to rally around it gives us points of commonality that we wouldn't otherwise have i get what they're feeling and i really kind of hope that they're going down the road that i think they're going which is uh, actually what you guys are doing is really important too so let's find out what happens here with lockley i, I kind of feel like they should just let let it ride out till the morning and then be done and call it good I'm pretty sure the situation will sort itself out at Planetary Sunrise when the area ceases to be Brakiri space. Well, that's what the authorities on the Brakiri homeworld assured me. You sold Babylon 5 to an alien race for the night who somehow transported a square mile of this station to their homeworld while apparently filling it with people temporarily returned from the dead? Yes, sir. Well, do you have an explanation as to why you did this? Yes, sir. I thought it was a metaphor, sir. I'll try to be... More literal they're no they're trying to clean up the line in the background. <laughs> any, any idea yet what actually happened? Oh, and uh, speaking of mysteries, I have a message for you. It's from someone named Kosh. What's the message? When the long night comes, return to the end of the beginning. Some of you out there were expecting me to have some big reaction to that right there. <gasps> I said Kosh earlier. Just making my note of who are these people who are sending these people back with messages. Everybody seems to have had a message. The idea that the Vorlon somehow are the ones sending them back. Morden comes back and tells Lanier he's going to betray the Endless Shock. Sheridan gets this when the long night comes. Return to the end of the beginning. Uh, Zahadum? Beginning of the end? We didn't have that. Let's hear the end of the beginning. Zahadum, right? I don't know. We'll debate what that means, I'm sure. Oh, he gets his gets his little word. What did he say? I can't tell you. Because it tells me to. All right, so I do believe this is what you call a weird ass episode. Pretty sure that is the uh, the technical term for it, a weird ass episode. I mean, okay, Penn and Teller come on, awesome. Lanier comes back for no apparent reason other than I guess to receive this message from Morden. People see their ghosts. I, I don't get it. I'm gonna have to think about this one some more. I don't have that much of a response to this one. So I do know Jeff has already seen this episode as, as I'm recording this and he's like, you're gonna have thoughts and I wanna know your thoughts. I actually don't know what my thoughts are. So you have to tune in on Monday and see what my thoughts are as well as Jeff. So with that, I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you guys so much for joining us be sure like we said like subscribe all that sort of stuff and we'll see you back here on monday when jeff and i get together and do a deep dive into this episode till then guys take care